Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics, reaching you live from our global headquarters here in the nation's commercial nerve center, Lagos. I'm Jeffrey Uzoma. Let's bring you some of the biggest stories we're tracking for you around the polity right now. President Bola Tinubu sacks five ministers, appoints seven new designees and reassigns portfolio to ten others, scraps Niger Delta and Sports Development Ministry as former Sports Minister Sunday Diary makes a return, but not to the cabinet. We'll break it down right here on the program. Benue State Governor Father High St. Elias suspends his commission of for justice and attorney general and public order for, order for joining states in the suit challenging the establishment of the EFCC. In the House of Representatives set up committee to investigate recurrent national grid collapse and setbacks affecting the provision of electricity for citizens and businesses across the country. But thanks again for joining us on the program and apparently embarrassed and exhausted by the incessant blackout occasion uh, by the national power grid collapse and setbacks, the House of Representatives has directed his committee on power to investigate the nagging issues and provide a report within the next three weeks. This decision followed a motion of urgent national importance raised by Honorable Mansa Monusoro from Bochi State during plenary session. In his motion, Mr. Soro says he is concerned over the persistent grid failures, which has plunged the entire country into darkness, worsening the economic challenges already faced by Nigeria, and stressing how stable power supply is essential for driving economic growth and development in any nation. ...for the week is yet to resume, and lawmakers are seen bantering amongst themselves. As principal officers settle down, the lawmakers get down to business and call for accountability from the power sector due to the insistent national grid collapse. That the entire states in the northeast, northwest, and some part of the north central zones have been has been thrown into darkness over the last two days in what the transmission company of Nigeria TCN described as faulty transmission lines. To mandate the House Committee on Power to investigate this unending power grid collapse and the House Legislative Committee on Compliance to ensure compliance. Another issue on the front burner is a proposed amendment to the Constitution to provide for an increment in the distribution of revenue from natural resources among the tiers of governments. It will discourage states from over dependence on the federal allocation that comes to their states. And the Speaker, as you all know, there are processes ongoing that many of the laws we find in the exclusive list. There's been an agitation that they should also be made move to the concurrent list where states can have equal rights. For example, Mr. Speaker, the issue of uh, correctional centers where states can also build and also take responsibility to renovate, which Kitoto has been the responsibility of the federal government. After plenary, the House Committee on Student Loans meets with the management of the Nigerian Education Loan Fund, urging them to ensure that the upcoming disbursement of 90 billion naira is more inclusive, following reports indicating that the Southeast region had the fewest beneficiaries from the 10 billion naira disbursed so far. Daily Omoyeni, Channels Television News. And Governor High St. Alia Benue State has suspended the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice and Public Order, Mr. Fidelis Nyem, for joining states challenging the establishment of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, ESCC, and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission. Addressing journalists after the State Executive Council, Governor Alia wondered why Benue State would join the League of States challenging the status of the anti graft agencies who are working to help his administration recover uh, funds allegedly diverted by the past administration. He accuses the suspended attorney general of, of not first seeking clearance from his administration before joining the suit. 
Benue State has been robbed by past uh, government, and we're only trying to see how we can get something back to develop the state. We have been deprived of our own financial resources here in the state. So why all of a sudden my administration will get back there, you know, to take the EFCC that is even helping the state, or the ICPC that is helping the state, you know, to do some recovery of what is stolen from the state. We are looking for money to develop the state. So why would we go back to say that we are taking these people to the, I mean, to, I mean, to the court for, for prescription? That is not the position of Benue State. And I, we strongly feel that if we just let that go, our lessons will not be learned here. Therefore, the Commissioner uh, Attorney, of, of uh, Justice and Attorney General for the state uh, has to pay quite dearly for this. Any person who is representing the state and you are sent out to do any meetings or to hold forth for the state must revert to the state. So apparently the governor is saying, who sent you? And that is the consequence of uh, his action. But let's see how that plays out eventually. Let's come back here to Lagos State. What the government has a pending case between it and the anti-graft agency. That's the EFCC uh, before the Supreme Court. And this is why it did not join the suit by other states challenging the legality of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission before the APS court. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Mr. Alawa Pedro, SAN, disclosed this to journalists on Wednesday on the sideline of a two-day strategic management meeting with ministries, departments and agencies and other stakeholders. The Attorney General noted that joining the new suit by some states against the EFCC would have amounted, abuse, amounted to abuse of court processes uh, since the Commission and the Lagos State Government are already before the court. Unknown to most people, uh, maybe you must have forgotten, that Lagos State Government enacted a law on public complaints and anti-corruption agency to set up the State Anti-Corruption Agency Commission to tackle corruption in states. However, the EFCC or the Federal Attorney General decided to challenge that law in the Supreme Court. So if you have joined this matter, it will amount to an abuse of court process. Even though we recognize the power of the federal government to enact a law to deal with corruption, but to a limited extent. And that's why in my address today remark, I pointed out that yes, they can, but where it happens to be a state law a state offense that a citizen has contravened, then any prosecution, EFCC, police, other agencies can investigate. But when, we come, when it comes to prosecution, it is the attorney general of the states that have the prosecutorial power over state offenses. So any other agency, either EFCC, police, that is prosecuting state offenses, they are only doing it on behalf of the attorney general because they are deemed to have the fiat of the Attorney General of the state to prosecute state offenses. Quite an interesting perspective. Let's now talk about the loss of federal job for five ministers who have now been sacked by President Bolatinobu following a cabinet reshuffle that sees the appointment of seven new ministers designate and the reassignment of 10 others. Those uh, who are no longer cabinet members include Minister of Women Affairs, Uju Ohaneye, Minister of Education, Taha Maman, and Minister of Tourism, Lala De Johnson, among others. Some of the new ministers uh, designated include Dr. Mentawe Yowata as Minister of Humanitarian Affairs uh, and Poverty Reduction, Mrs. Bianca Ono Udmejo Juku as Minister of Foreign Affairs, that's for state, and Dr. Jumoke Oduwale as Minister of Industry, Trade, and investment. Meanwhile, the president also scraps and merged some ministries. Our state house correspondent Larry Lassisi has this report. 
The 12th Federal Executive Council meeting commences with the swearing-in of Abdullahi Bello as the chairman of the Code of Conduct Bureau. The meeting proceeds into a closed-door session immediately afterwards. And a few hours later, some ministers arrive to speak on the resolutions of the meeting. The Aswile Ministry of Niger Delta has now been renamed Ministry of Regional Development. The president and members of council today took a decision to rename that ministry so that all these other regional bodies will come other under this new ministry of regional uh, development. There is no longer from today the Ministry of Sports Development. All activities and programs of the Ministry of Sports Development are now being brought under the National Sports Commission. Number three, the Ministry of Tourism has also been scrapped. Uh, activities of that ministry are now being brought under the Ministry of Arts, Culture, Tourism, and Creative Economy. So that ministry will now be called Ministry of Arts, Culture, Tourism, and Creative Economy. A few minutes after the ministers leave, the special advisor to the president arrives with more developments. The president has approved the immediate implementation of eight far-reaching actions to reinvigorate the administration's capacity for optimal efficiency, pursuant of his commitment to deliver on his promises to Nigerians. In addition to the developments earlier outlined by the Minister of Information, the Special Advisor announced new portfolios for some ministers. The Minister of State Education, Honorable Dr. Tanko Sununu, is now Minister of State Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Reduction. The Minister of State Health, Dr. Olatunji Alausa, now Minister of Education. The Minister of State Water Resources, Barista Bello Goroyo, now Minister of State Works. Minister of Niger Delta Development, Honorable Abakar Momo, now Minister of Regional Development. And the Minister of State Steel Development, Ubame Geri Amadu, now Minister of State Regional Development. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Doris Uzuka Anite, to now be the Minister of State Finance. The Minister of Sports Development, Senator John Eno, will now serve as Minister of State Industry, Trade and Investment. Minister of State Police Affairs, Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, to serve as Minister of Women Affairs. Minister of State for Youth Development, Ayodele Olawande, becomes the Minister for Youth Development. And the Minister of State Environment, Dr. Salako Adeboe, now to serve as Minister of State Health. These are the following ministers who have been, who have been discharged. And as you know, the President met them this afternoon to thank them for their services for the nation. They are as follows. Barista Huju Ken Oaneye, Minister of Women Affairs. Lola Adejon, Minister of Tourism. Professor Tahir Mama, Minister of Education. Abdullahi Muhammad Guazo, Minister of State Housing and Urban Development. Dr. Jamila Biu Ibrahim, Minister of Youth Development. So only five ministers were discharged. He also announced seven new ministerial nominees. Dr. Nentawe Yilwalda as Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Reduction. Megeri Dinyadi as Minister of Labor and Employment. Bianca Odumegu Ojuku as Minister of State Foreign Affairs. Dr. Jomoke Oduwole as Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. Mukhtar Meha as Minister of Livestock Development. Honorable Yusuf Abdullahi Atta as Minister of State, Housing and Urban Development, and Suwaiba Ahmad as Minister of State Education, all subject to confirmation by the Senate. Two other appointments were announced, that of Sheu Diko as the Chairman of the National Sports Commission and that of former Minister Sunday Dari as the Special Advisor to the President on Public Communication and Orientation. From the Presidential Villa, Lanre Lassisi, 
Channels Television News. The appointments of new ministers as well as the sacking of others, including the reassignment of some ministers changing their portfolio is a conversation we'll be having today in the next few minutes with a former minister of the Federation, Mr. Solomon Dalong, uh, who is a former minister of sports, joining us via Zoom. Thank you, sir, for coming on the program. Good afternoon and welcome, fellow Nigerians. Uh, let's get your first impression. Um, of course, I know by now you would have heard and seen that there's no more minister. Ministry of Sports Development. Now it's uh, the National Sports Commission will take charge, with Shea Udiko in charge of all. That's where you served at some point. And then the Minister of Sports now has now been moved to uh, State for Trade, uh, Industry and Investment. And then we had a former Minister of Sports that succeeded you uh, taking over, uh, coming in as a special advisor, not even in the presidency, but in the, uh, the Ministry of Information. So... There are, people have been commenting on this particular development. Some are hitting, giving knocks, some are giving praises, some are just in between. So what's your own impression of this outcome? Well, I think um, my take on this development is that um, sports is a mega ministry and a cabinet ministry that... Uh, play a strategic role, not only in national development, but it's also diplomacy. And so relegating the ministry now to the level of uh, a commission, to me, is, is not the best for now. What I have expected would have been that I mean, the much technical component of the ministry, which is the National Sports Commission, that was abolished in 2015, to have been reintroduced to enhance professionalism and provide the missing technical component of the Ministry of Sports. Uh, but uh, we have now relegated it back to the National Commission, which not too long we will realize that um, it is not the best because you have Ministry of Communication and you have the National Communication Commission. We have been having so many problems with uh, uh, communication in this country. Government did not abolish the national the, the Ministry of uh, Communication to leave National Communication Commission because that is the technical component of the ministry. But I think what the government needed to have done was to bring back the National Post Commission so that professionals and technocrats will man it then recruit and train professionals. But now the ministry has been abolished, and I don't know what is the status of the National Sports Commission. Is it a, does it have a ministerial status, which, which to my understanding is not? So the other higher state responsibilities of the ministry at both national and international level will be performed by who? Well, that, that, uh, but I, I don't know. Maybe uh, as we go further, we'll find out where they are domiciled at the moment. Uh, I, I've spoken with a couple of uh, the people that are in the know, and it depends on what side you're looking at as far as the role is concerned. But let's expand the conversation beyond sports uh, generally now. Uh, for other ministries, now let's talk about the people that have been fired. Do you agree with that listing? Should the president, have, should, have, should he have fired more people because... We spoke to someone earlier, I said, look, yeah, a lot of these gentlemen and ladies, a couple of them are not doing well at all. They should have, would have had maybe 50% of the cabinet uh, excused from the cabinet and get fresh people in. Of course, the ministry, the, there's also the concern about the, the size of the cabinet is perhaps the largest uh, since because we have about 47 now, still about 47 because uh, we had uh, five fired. I remember... Simon, uh, the, the former governor of Plateau State, was uh, he went to the Senate, 
bet I do was suspended. So we had two less. So removing five and bringing seven is like completing the number to still be around 47. So what's your impression in terms of the number, the size of the cabinet, the people that are fired, the people that should have been fired, uh, just generally on this particular point? The, the people that were fired are those who do not have godfathers and godmothers in the kitchen. And so they were fired. But there, there, there were more people, in fact, 70% of the cabinet should have been fired because uh, their performances have been far, far, far below uh, expectation. Looking at the huge budgetary appropriation made to the ministries, and yet there is nothing uh, moving on. So I'm, I'm dissatisfied personally uh, with the number of people fired because um, the number is too minimal. The majority of the non-performing members have either been reassigned or promoted to cabinet rank, and they are still uh, there. Then coming back to the size of the cabinet, I think it is unjustifiable because the president is preaching sacrifice and tell, promising Nigerians that we should sacrifice for a better future. But there is nothing exemplary uh, in the, the attitude of the government to demonstrate that they are also sacrificing. I mean, you cannot have a huge cabinet like the one we have now in place, and you are asking Nigerians to sacrifice. So I think uh, uh, government needs to do more than what they have done now. And um, to reduce the cabinet, even reduce the ministry to go in tandem with the sacrifices they are asking Nigerians to do. And their lifestyle too and spendings should also be sacrificial because the president cannot be asking us to sacrifice while government is using huge amount of money to renovate the houses of vice president, 21 billion, buying of new jets, new Cadillac, New Year and new this. I think that does not represent the fact that Nigeria is undergoing trying. So, so Mr. Mr. So Dalong, uh, if, we, if we move on from the, I, I understand you perfectly, just because of time, that's why I had to cut in my apologies. Let, let's talk about the, I, I also mentioned the fact that you said 70%. So, do you have like some ministries or ministers that you think that uh, should have been fired? Because we know that. Ministry of Niger Delta has now, in my view, repurposed, if you want to take it like that, because the same minister that was there is still going to be in charge of regional development because there's a proliferation of all of this regional development agency, interventionist agency like the NEDC, NDDC, and all of that. And then the submerging of uh, tourism into art, culture, tourism now, and creative economy. So if you are to look at that cabinet uh, as it is, and from what you've seen, who should have been fired that is still in, in, is still in government? Well, I, I, I don't want to be involved in profiling of uh, Nigerians because it's against my principle. But I think that I will comment on the issue of the Minister of Regional uh, Development. You see, the, government, the president has endorsed injustice because there is no commission, there is no development commission for the peoples of the North Central. So, which minister do we have now to represent our interests at that level? Because we also have so much, so much natural resources. We have even the uh, hydro dam in uh, Kainji that has been producing power to this country. We, we uh, Tin from Joe's was the mainstay of um, the economy. So what development commission do we have now for the people of the North Central. Okay, well, that is, a, that is a question the president will have to answer because uh, that also brings me to the issue of that I saw some people raise. I don't know whether it's also a point of uh, concern for you uh, when it has to do with federal character. Although section 147 of the constitution says the president can make appointment, but at least one person from each state. It didn't say the maximum. It only talked about the minimum. But we're seeing that Ogun State, for instance, has four 
uh, ministers. If my Jumokewu is coming in, I think she's also from Ogunwale, Edo, Boso Tijani. I think the Minister of State for Environment, uh, Salako Adekunle. Uh, is that something that uh, you want to comment on as well? The president should look at that because he's uh, sending a bad signal about uh, his uh, attitude as a father. Because what is the justification for um, appointing four ministers from one state uh, while one one from others? As a father, you need to do justice to all. That was what he saw too. So he did sway to do injustice to all manner of men. So that to me is injustice, which is more or less what I have complained about for the peoples of the North Central, who has been completely relegated in the course of development. I don't see that as healthy, and the president should revisit it. As we begin to wind down, at the end and at the, at the, at the very core of this, it's about delivering good governance, delivering service to the people, which so some people, they'll say they'll give him credit for thinking through that in 15 months, he's changing cabinet. He has to do this more and more. There's also the Bianca who has come in, who is also the second person from another political party, Afghan now coming into the cabinet. That's all of that. By the end of it, at the core of it, it's performance and delivery. Do you see this cabinet reshuffled and people brought in and removed? Do you see them doing better? No, I, I don't see anything changing. Rather... Um, the president has succeeded in compensating political aids and then uh, recruiting new alliances. Uh, of course, bringing Bianca now the Moda General of the Igbo Nation, uh, it's, it's clear that uh, he's laying his cart for 2027. But that is, I don't see anything serious uh, that is going to change because uh, a very serious approach to serious issues will always manifest itself from the beginning. So the president has succeeded in recruiting more uh, allies from different parts of the country, but the country is languishing in pains, uh, penury and poverty, which he needs to concentrate on. Because this cabinet, I'm not a prophet, I don't wish them uh, Bad, but I don't expect any change from them. Mr. Solomon Dalong, I must thank you so much for coming through whenever we call to have this conversation. You are, you are, you are, you've been a member of the cabinet, so you're, you are competent to speak to some of the inner workings as far as this issue is concerned. I will continue to call on you guys uh, to speak on it. Thank you so much for coming on the program, sir. My door is wide open, and I'm sorry for the late uh, joining because it's due to the situation in the country. Not a problem, not a problem. We understand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Solomon Dalong is a former no minister reason. of now, uh, Scrapped Ministry of Sport. <laughs> He's just, I'm just smiling talking about it. All right. Thank you, sir, for coming. And, <laughs> and that's it on the program. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, your usual company, you've been served a lunchtime politics. <laughs> <laughs>